Hey, this is Melinda and welcome to my channel. So today I'm doing something a little bit different. I am here with my husband, Philip, and I wanted to do a video just totally different. I'm celebrating 100 videos. I've already completed 100 videos. This is video number 101. And I wanted to show, um, just celebrate it with my husband because he's a huge part of vinyl collecting for me. He helps me edit my videos. He takes me, we go together to a lot of record stores. We do a lot of record shopping together. So I just thought it would be a really cool way to celebrate a hundred videos done. I do one a week. I don't do, you know, two or three videos a week. I just stick to just one a week for the most part. And so I can't believe I've done a hundred. I cannot believe actually I do videos if, um, Philip can tell you in my real life, I'm more of a background kind of gal. I'm not really one to put myself um, up front and center. So this is really weird and unusual for me, but I've had so much fun. And I'm gonna be asking my husband a lot of questions about vinyl collecting, what it's like to live with someone who's addicted to vinyl collecting. He's gonna be very honest. We've been married for over 26 years, so our marriage can handle this. And uh, he's got some records he's going to be showing. I'm asking some tough questions. You know, may not want to know the answers to, but I'm going to take it. I'm a big girl. I can handle it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and get started now. Are you ready? Sure. <laughs> okay. So what do you like best? Oh, and just so you all know, I gave him the questions and uh, so that he would be able to think about his answers but i don't know what his answers are going to be this is totally in the dark for me okay so it's going to be a lot of fun i think let me go and get started what do you like uh about my vinyl collecting what do you like about it nothing no i'm kidding <laughs> <laughs> uh i think for me the what i like the most is that it gets us out and we get to see a lot of new places and meet a lot of new people and yeah. just going to these little towns and finding record stores and um, I like to, you know me I like to talk to the owners and see where their background is and what they what got them into vinyl and right that's right. my favorite part yeah so us out. and just so you all know he does not collect vinyl he likes <laughs> music but he's not as into music as I am he didn't grow up with a radio playing all the time in his house like I did so uh, and also I can say we could probably have opposite taste in music with maybe we've got some few exceptions and we do have one genre that we both really can agree on so uh question number two what do you not like about my vinyl collecting <laughs> uh other than the financial aspects it is really expensive at times yes. and maybe we could retire a few years earlier if we didn't do this <laughs> maybe. maybe maybe i'll sell them and make a lot of money someday i don't know uh, and sometimes it can be all consuming between yes. going and looking at records and going to stores on the weekends and then uh, she spends a lot of time watching other people's videos and sometimes yes. i'm about to pull my hair out like oh my gosh are we gonna watch another vinyl video <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i just go upstairs and do my own thing and it does take a lot of time when i'm doing comments yeah that was my next thing it's okay. so it's, i know melinda sometimes i think in general a lot of the women in the VC have gotten a lot of flack for coming on and getting more subscribers, but I think what a lot of people don't know is how much work she actually puts into this. Uh, gosh, he sits there and answers every comment. There's some videos, there's hundreds, if not a thousand plus comments on, and she answers every single one. Um, she spends a lot of time doing the video, thinking about it. <clears throat> we edit them together. Uh, so it can be all consuming at times. Yeah, it does take a lot of time. I love the comments though, so keep them coming. I enjoy that. That's something I really enjoy is just hearing from people, learning from people. I really love that. So yeah, but it does take a lot of time. So it's time away from the marriage, time away from him. But anyway, okay, so here's a question. Are there any channels uh, here in the vinyl community? Because I will watch uh, vinyl videos when he's around. Are there any that you've liked so much that you've actually watched when I'm not around? Yeah, the interesting thing is before you really got into the vinyl community and you started collecting, I was already watching a couple of channels. Uh, there was a guy, and he still does videos occasionally, just not as much used to. There's a guy named Vinylize that I started watching. Uh -huh. Um, kind of to help you get started and learn about record players and what you should, you know, need. And um, also Frank with Channel 33 RPM, oh, yeah. I've watched him from 
since you started and I still yes. watch his videos. Yeah, we watch those together a lot of times, but if we don't watch it, he still catches it. Yeah, he just and, seems like such a nice, genuine guy. Yes, and we watch Hannah, the Omaha introvert, together a lot of times. Or is there, who else do we watch together? Can you think of anybody um, else? Sometimes we'll put a Mazzy video on. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's always entertaining. Yes. <laughs> okay, so uh, the next question I'm going to ask is... Uh, what in my vinyl collecting do you find weird? Oh, okay. So this is where, <laughs> so she gave me the list of questions and I went through her collection both on Discogs and physically to find some stuff. So I've actually pulled some stuff. You ready for me to uncover this? Yeah, yeah. He, I don't know what he's going to show. <laughs> I don't know what this is going to be. <laughs> so I'm going to pull them out. Oh. Gonna... <laughs> this is the Halloween soundtrack, right? Mm -hmm why anybody would actually put this on and listen to it oh i love it it's got the really creepy <laughs> so weird creepy sounds i like actually around <clears throat> the fall i like listening to them <laughs> i actually enjoy that a lot okay you ready for the next one it, something i find oh, weird yeah we're gonna stick on the weird for okay, a while. okay. <laughs> i got two or three of these <laughs> yoko ono oh. why anybody would want to hear this lady screech oh. <laughs> I just don't get it. Um, and now, I really love this album because John <laughs> sings on it, but I agree. I'm not a huge Yoko fan as far as her artistically, but I love how she has kept John's music alive. I have a lot of respect for her. But, so, let's, but let's be honest. If she was didn't marry John Lennon, she would have never gotten a recording contract. <laughs> that might be true. Never. <laughs> okay, that might be true. We're getting thumbs, thumbs down now, but okay. All right, I got, I got two more things. <laughs> Captain That's... Beefheart Trout Master Rebel Club. Now we put this on as a joke when people come over and act like we're listening <laughs> to something serious. And I'm not sure if people say they like this if they're just like perpetuating the weirdness and just but no, there's no way people listen to that. <laughs> And then the last thing I have that's weird, since you phrased the question that way, mm -hmm. this is what I don't understand. Oh, no. <laughs> so we have Sgt. Pepper by the Beatles. And this is the uh, original master recording, so it's a very important one to have. We have Sgt. Pepper by this, the Beatles. This is the mono press. <laughs> very important to have. We have Sgt. Pepper <laughs> and the Beatles. The Giles Martin <laughs> remix. <laughs> We have Sergeant Pepper. And the this is just sentimental. He brought that one home to me one time. I have this is just an older pressing of it. Very cool. We have Sergeant Pepper. I don't know. Yeah, this one came out of a box set, so there we go. And then we have Sergeant Pepper and the Lone Star Heart Band. And, and then yeah, I don't know if you can see it. It's probably behind her head, but there's probably another one in the Beatles mono box set behind us. So there's oh a yeah movie. yeah there is. There, I have a mono box set, and also this was given to me a guy he works with. We had a, a dinner together, and he just brought this as a gift. I didn't pick this one out myself, but I think it's really cool. So, yeah, um, I have um, multiple copies of records where he probably thinks that's a huge waste of money, where I think, <laughs> but you got to have the mono pressing, and you got to have this, and you got to have that. So, it's a lot of fun. I'll so. set those down there so okay. knock them over. Okay. All right. I think that's it on my weirdness question. Okay, what are your favorite records that are in my collection? All right, number one is yeah. Boston. This is their debut album, right? Yep. So when I was a teenager, uh, More Than a Feeling was actually the first song I learned on the guitar. And honestly, mm -hmm. it's just a lot of good classic rock. It's a very good album. It I don't is. know if there's anything bad on there. There's nothing bad on it. It's <laughs> a great album. And I can't tell you all how many times I've heard him on the guitar playing the intro to more than a feeling so yes she's probably that's a good choice I didn't she's probably like that. oh my gosh do you not remember anything else <laughs> uh this is probably a little bit of a weird one a little bit obscure this is the jerry garcia and we got this at record store day probably the first one i went to with her and there's a song on here if i remember right called without love that i just really like yeah and this is something he actually found at Record Store Day. He went with me, um, and you just saw this album. What what drew you to this album? What made you want to buy it? There were a couple of people in line. They were like, oh, i got to have it, got to have it. And I got sucked into the <laughs> you hype. You fell into the hype? <laughs> yeah, a little bit. So I get the hype part. Guilty. Yeah, I get now, it. she's going to cringe on this one because she absolutely hates this album. <laughs> and I cannot listen to, her, to it with her around. But I do really like the Tracy Chapman uh, debut album. Yeah. Um, so 
Tracy Chapman. So she probably has Fast no car. I just, you know, when I was a teenager, <laughs> I just did not get it. And I just still, it's just not one of those I've ever, you know, just gotten a huge love for. So anyway, okay, so the next question um, are um, albums in my collection that make you cringe. So I've already talked about our my, your favorites in my, what makes you cringe? When I'm pulling something out, you think, okay, I'm going to go upstairs and watch Gold Rush or just some other thing. You just yeah. do not want to hear it with me. Yeah, speaking of Gold Rush. And this is probably where we start getting thumbs down. Don't hold it against her, but I cannot stand Rush. The guy's <laughs> voice is like fingers on a chalkboard Aww. to me. Uh, I just do not like Rush at all. And I love Rush. So, yeah, so if she plays that, Ooh. I'm upstairs watching something yeah, on the History he, Channel. I can't watch. I can't like listen that. to Rush when he's around. He doesn't love Rush. No. Um, <laughs> and next, she's going to kill me for this because she just spent a gazillion dollars on a box set. I got a good deal on that box set. That was a good deal. <laughs> is that what you call a good That's deal? That's a good deal. Uh, uh, Queen, this is their greatest hits. I haven't opened it up, but in my mind, it's probably a 45 RPM single, and you put Fat Bottom Girls on it, and you're done with their greatest oh, hits. <laughs> you do like Fat Bottom Girls, though. We love that song. That's yeah. actually a lot of fun. It is, one. but anything else of theirs, I just never got it. And I just think they're... Everything they do all. is great to me. Everything. And as I look through my cringeworthy, it really comes down to the voice I've decided. Because I don't, for the most part, like Freddie Mercury's I voice. I cannot imagine I that. I don't like Rush's voice. <laughs> and ACDC, was this, Back in Black? Yes. Um, I don't even know the singer's name, but it, I mean, I would rather go to the dentist than listen to that guy sing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, I don't. I get it. I get it. after you listen to a few ACDC albums, they all do kind of sound very similar. So I get that. Okay, so the next question. Oh, I was going to ask, what stereo equipment upgrade do you think I need the most? Oh boy, more money. Yeah. Uh, I would say your receiver is probably next. We got you a nice set of SVS speakers, which yes. are very nice for the money. Yes. We upgraded your cartridge to an order phone. Phone, phone. Airphone. Two M blue. Airphone blue. Two M blue. Um, probably your receivers next, and then at some point probably a better turntable. But uh, it sounds pretty good for. for this. <laughs> yeah, it's a good turntable. I actually <laughs> like the automatic. I'm, you know, I, I'm getting more used to it to where I probably could do a manual. But when I first started record collecting, I just thought, ooh, I don't want to take a chance on scratching a record. So I got an automatic turntable. Eventually, <laughs> I'm hoping to be able to get something. A little bit better, a little more upgrade, but I'm not in a hurry. All right, so um, what are your favorite record stores we go to? Uh, you know, and this answer is about the people because I don't really look for records. And when, when she first started, I could help her dig for records because I kind of knew the common stuff and I could just flip through and find them for her. But now it's to the point she's getting obscure stuff and I have no idea what to look for. Yeah. So it's all about the people. Um, I really like Phonolux in Nashville. There's a guy named Scott. Uh, I think he's the manager of that store. And I just like talking to him. He's a really nice guy. And I really like um, hard copies down in, he just moved from our town down to Bowling Green, Kentucky. And he's just a nice guy. I like to talk to him. Doug, so yeah. it's, it, to me, it's all about meeting the people and talking to them. All right. So what band or artist would you like to see? Oh, I'm on this. You just skipped one. I'm sorry. Which one am I? Okay. Okay, so we've been to concerts together. What is your favorite concert? And it doesn't have to be one you've seen with me. He sometimes goes out of town. He's had um, opportunities to go to concerts without me in Kansas City. What is your favorite concert you've ever been to? Um, so my favorite concert, and, and I need to preface this with, I grew up in a house, we were not allowed to listen to secular music. So I didn't have the uh, basis that most people have in music. I was just... It was contemporary Christian and gospel and that kind of stuff. So um, my favorite concert was Amy Grant in Nashville uh, at an outdoor, I can't remember the name of the theater, it's not there anymore, uh, but it was an outdoor concert. And I was probably 13, 14 years old and my sister and her best friend invited me to tag along and I just felt like the biggest kid in the world. Yeah, so it's, yeah, I love Amy Grant too. And I've actually got the opportunity to see Amy Grant and Vince Gill. They were actually at a concert with the Jonas Brothers. I took my daughter to see the Jonas Brothers. And so she's a great singer. I really love her. And so, yeah, that's a good choice. All right. Uh, your least favorite concert you ever went to? This is gonna make you mad to no end and you'll know why and you'll laugh about it. My least favorite concert we went to was Paul McCartney. No, oh, and it's because <laughs> no, why? I, got, 
I got seated right behind a guy that was about 100 pounds overweight. His pants were hanging low, and I don't think the guy had wiped in a week. And he just smelled. And I could not enjoy that concert because of just the odor the whole time. I was it was a bad really smell, <laughs> and we were on bleacher seats. We had bad seats, and they were from like probably the 60s or something when it just we were all scrunched in together so close that um it didn't bother me paul was still fantastic and you have will admit paul was great and yeah what i could hear I yeah was <laughs> around the gas <laughs> <laughs> but terrible. yeah that that did add but i i really love that concert that's actually my favorite concert i've ever been to because paul just more than made up for whatever we had to go through <laughs> all right so um okay so uh now if you were to go to a concert who would you like to see and i want to ask him i wanted to ask him what if there was a band or an artist that is no longer living that if he could go back in time and see who you want to see this one will probably surprise you that i picked that actually Jimi hendrix oh yeah, yeah. yeah. but I yeah just, i agree I would. that just seems like somebody that i'd like to go see and oh, it seems yeah. like he'd probably put on a pretty good show oh. plus it'd be good people watching i think the crowd would be good for that. <laughs> Uh, and then um, what you would like to see now if you you know whoever's alive now if you go to any concert at all what, who would you want to see it would have to be you too okay and the reason is again growing up i did not listen to secular music at all and um when i became a teenager i don't what year does come out 88 probably 87 87 88 mm -hmm. uh, i had just gotten my driver's license had gotten a job so i went and bought you too uh, convinced my mom that they started out as a Christian band. I don't know where they did or not. <laughs> <laughs> they and, were, they were. And um, so I absolutely wore this out. It was actually, I honestly can't remember if it was a tape or a CD. It was right in there where they were flipping over. And I was one of the first people in town that got a CD player. So I can't, I think it was a CD on that one actually. It's a great album. All right. So <laughs> I wanted to ask him what my biggest waste of money when I came home and showed him a record or something he saw me buy, did he think, you have wasted your money? What a piece of crap. You know. um, I actually didn't prepare for this question. <laughs> I forgot you asked this one because oh. it wasn't on my list, but you did. It, probably that queen box set behind oh, us. Oh, no, 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 no. I love that. <laughs> and one of my viewers gave me such a good deal on it, and I'm so appreciative. Thank you, Brian. But uh, I love that and, one. And it's beyond, not a waste of money. And beyond just the taste of it, there are, you know, that's that's a taste thing, whether it's a value or not. What It's the, the cost of some of the records occasionally that you just have to have. So if you look at like balance van halen i think i bought you that for christmas yes, one year so i didn't buy that but <laughs> i'm innocent on that one <laughs> but then you did buy a different kind of truth right yeah that was very and so expensive. some of those early 90s mid 90s records yeah. that i mean they're not worth what they're asking for it's a sentimental thing and mm -hmm. i'm just like oh my gosh yeah so yeah okay all right <laughs> so okay so what would you like to see on my channel is there anything like a type of video that i haven't done that you would like to see me do something on my channel that you think would be fun um i mean i'd like to see more technical content have you get more technical about the equipment and <laughs> editing and just because that's me i'm a technical guy I'm, a, mm -hmm. I'm kind of a computer nerd by trade and yes and i'll just say one of my <clears throat> maybe my biggest regret when i started making this video these videos i wish i would have picked a name i'm so bored with the name melinda murphy <laughs> as my channel I thought about a name. I have one that I still wish I had implemented, and I regret not doing it. I feel like it's almost too late now to change my name. But yeah, so I kind of agree with that as far as um, being able to explain more technical things. Yeah, I agree. And right. being able to do my own editing and you not have to deal with it at all, that'd be nice too. <laughs> that right? would be awesome. <laughs> I don't mind it most of the time. All right, so uh, what's the favorite video I've done? Is there is something else that, like, something you have a good memory of that I, a video I made out of it? I would say, like, your stereo equipment and the videos like the jukebox because I like it when we do the B roll and it goes to different cuts of different things. And yeah. to me, that's just interesting and makes it again more, more technical. Mm -hmm. But now uh, he helped me a lot and um, yeah, I did a lot of the cleaning out of the jukebox, but he's the one who brought the jukebox to life. So <laughs> he and he also had to take it up our stairs. Oh, and that was, that yeah, if, if we ever move, I think everybody's going to get as a bonus. They're going to get a jukebox because they are. I can't imagine it coming back down. Yeah. Okay, so um, 
What's your least favorite video? Do you, is there anything that you thought, man, that was a bad video? Oh, I know I have one in mind. And, and I don't mean this to offend anybody, you or anybody who does this. I'm not a big fan of the contest videos. Any contest video to me is just kind of, meh. I like it better when you drive your own content and not answering questions or whatever. And I know you do that because they're friends and you enjoy yes. doing it. There's nothing wrong with it, but to me, those are the least interesting. Yeah, there's people who um, I'm really great friends with. And I love doing the contest videos. It's actually one of the reasons why I started doing vinyl videos is because I wanted to enter the contest. It is. And um, so... I don't know, when I started doing the videos, I wanted to do contests, and now I'm kind of to a point where to keep a good balance in my life, I like doing one video a week. And I don't get to do the videos. Uh, and sometimes I find like, I've already made a contest entry that's very similar to the questions right. of the new contests. Yeah, I so I have to it. keep it fresh. So uh, yeah, that's part of, um, I kind of understand where you're coming from on that. But uh, I have done some really fun videos that have done very well that were contests. If I have the time and it's a good contest where it's like, hmm, those are questions I've never answered before and I think it's a really interesting subject. Um, or just someone I really feel like I'm, I want to do a video for them because they're such a good friend and someone I really, you know, I respect everybody in the vinyl community, but of course everybody has people they're closer with, closer friendships. So, um, okay, so. Um, what band or artist do you like because of vinyl? So with us going to record stores and seeing all these records, yeah. is there something that really just came across to you that you decided, I love this? Yeah, I've got a two or three here. Okay. We'll go with these in a different order. So yep. again, didn't grow up listening to secular music. So really, it's gonna kill me. No. Um, something sticky on that one. Um, there's a couple of bands that I really do like, and again, didn't listen to these as a kid, so you kind of introduced me to these. Uh, Pink Floyd, and this is probably my favorite album there, Wish You Were Here. Yes, and the, the Pink Floyd Wish You Were Here album was actually introduced to us. I was watching a, ch a channel, Billy Hurst, and you've probably watched Billy Hurst channels with me as well. Yeah. And we love Billy Hurst, and he talked about that being a perfect 10 album, and I was a huge fan of Pink Floyd. Well, I wouldn't say huge, but I knew a lot of their albums. But for some reason, Wish You Were Here wasn't one. It's not like The Wall or Dark Side of the Moon. It was just a little less popular. So it got me interested, and I listened to it and fell in love with it. And so we were both listening to it um, in the pool, just laying on floats. We, And so now we both love listening to this when we're in the car. I had a hard time finding that because it has a different cover normally, right? Yes, and it I has the, you, the men shaking hands and, and he's on you, fire. And I thought yeah. you had the other one, but I couldn't find it in there. I sold it at the garage sale. I had this copy and I had an older copy that was noisy, so I sold that one at the garage sale. So, okay. All right. And then The Who. Yeah. The, uh, love this album, the yes. Bob O'Reilly, and I think oh. um, Love Ain't For Keeping or something's on there. Uh, be, Behind Blue Eyes. Yeah. I, that's so, a great album. Yeah, I, I agree. And, and the ending of this album is killer, so yes. And again, that's not something I listened to growing up. And then something we've kind of gotten into together is jazz yes and love miles davis we've got a john coltrane box set back there and uh, several different things so you know when we're making dinner or just relaxing we sit out by the, the fire pit sometimes and just sit there and watch uh, listen to the music while we watch the fire and the dog wallers all over us and we yeah. hang out <laughs> yes and uh, as far as miles davis i think this was the album out of our collection you bought that you wanted for yourself yep that's probably the, well, no, we have Miles Garcia. Smiles, Jerry Garcia, and there was one from Record Store of Miles Davis called Rubber Band or something like that. It was an EP, and something I've like got that. A, I've got a few weird ones that I've bought over the years, just sentimental mm -hmm. stuff to me that nobody else would know. Right. So, all right. So, um, okay, so here's the final question, and it's kind of morbid, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, so when I die, if I die first... What will you do with all of this? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is make sure we have a supplemental insurance policy on your record collection mm -hmm. and then gas and matches, and I get the cash value. Oh, <laughs> no, 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 no. No, just kidding. Um, you know, really what I would probably do is I would let Melissa, our daughter, pull the sentimental ones that she really wants and likes, because ultimately it's all going to her anyway, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there's probably a few I would pull that are sentimental to you that mean something to us together. And then I would probably start 
selling them. I don't know that I would sell them as a collection altogether. I'd probably sell them individually and let people buy things that they want. liked your channel, that really liked things that you talked about. Oh, that's neat. I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. that's so sweet. <laughs> that that's really cool all right well so that was my answers all right so now I just thought it would be an interesting video to do just to kind of give you a little bit of a background of me my vinyl collecting my husband and uh, I just thought it'd be a lot of fun so you could kind of get an idea and also just what it's like for someone who doesn't collect vinyl what it's like to live with a vinyl addict like me so it's terrible no, <laughs> So that is going to be my video for the week. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I would really appreciate your support. And to everybody who watches my videos that I've made a hundred of now, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.